Good morning, traders. Welcome to daily webinar. This webinar will be in YouTube for the weekly outlook as well. So uh, please make your comments, like, share. And for those viewers watching it on YouTube, if you like the content we're giving, please share it with a friend. Maybe you're going to help them to learn something new about wave analysis. So let's go. Let's start. Dollar index. Dollar index, we're coming down as expected. So let me just go back to the daily, remind everybody where we are. We're in a kind of a consolidation here. And we were expecting it to come to the top, break the top, or don't break the top and come back. And the reason we said, or don't break the top in this case is because for the last three webinars, I've been reminding traders that this might not be all the consolidation. Right, there's a rare chance that this is all the consolidation. It could still be, but there's a rare chance. There's a chance that this comes back only to this level, go back up there, and then probably drop. We might have a more complex flat pattern here. We broke the top, we're coming down. So the only question again remains, like last week, when we had the same question last week, is whether this move to the upside is finished. So last week we had this flat, we were expecting to break the top of that flat, and then you had this sharp move. And we were also expecting either you're going to do two things. You're going to come here, go back up, break the top, and then come down. That was one option. Or the second option is you just drop, which means come here, make a flag. We go for the sell, and that should bring us down. Now, we did break. It did make a flag, which was good. They make a flat there. It dropped. Now the question is whether this is going to continue to drop. That's all. If it continues to drop, we keep selling. So last Friday, I wasn't in the trading room because I couldn't make it, but I think you guys managed to trade it. So there were some good trades and I think that was amazing. I'm pretty sure you got them. And we've got a flat. Now we did, we did have a three wave structure here, right? One, two, three. So this could either be all the smaller, all the corrections for the small level, or we're looking at a bigger possible corrective structure here. I think the bigger structure is out because if, if they were making a bigger structure, and even if you were using this as a three-wave structure, the possibility is this would reverse, right? If we were thinking upside, that would have reversed. It's not reversing, it's making a flag here. That's a good sign because every flag we get, every correction we get, we will sell, right? I think we can look at this as a possible running flat in the making because this first one up was sharp. So I think there's a good chance we're looking at a possible running flat in the making for downside. You guys know how to trade running flats. So we know the strategy for that. So we're looking for sell setups. Now, we're going to manage the trade. You're going to get in the trade. The possibility of this trade going down has just increased because of structural patterns that we see. But we will still manage every trade we get into just in case it doesn't go. I think this is a good trade setup, which means there's a high probability for the downside. Silver broke the top as expected. And then the question on silver now is whether we're going to go higher, whether this moves, sorry, whether this moves here, go up to the top here now, or if we make a new low and then go back to the top. So that is that's the purpose of those two arrows there. We can still make a new low and then go. So on the four hour, we broke the top. Now we have to have a consolidation here and then a reversal. Or this starts to drop, make a flag and drop down to make a new low and then go. Either of those are possible. Any At any one time, this could turn, right? We don't know whether this is the turn. So if you were in the buy, and you probably should have been in the buy, there was a short sell. And remember what we said last week during the, in the trading room while we were doing it in last week's webinar? This sell is a dangerous one. You really don't want to take the sell especially in a news event, because if you take the sell, all it needs to do was break this low and reverse, which is what happened because this became a flat we were looking at. So we already knew on Friday and Thursday and Wednesday that that's a flat for upside, right? The question was whether you can get the trade. I think if, if you guys traded it, you actually took it to the upside because it had already broke, I think, either before the news or maybe after. But in any case, that would not have been a trade setup for a sell. For a buy, yes. But we broke the top and they're coming back. So we can look at this two ways. It's probably trying to make a new low and then go, or we're just going to make another correction here and take off. So if we get a correction there today, it's a good trade setup for the upside. This could be the first wave done. 
probably watch it come back here, do something like this. And if we get a small, we're not expecting a big one like this. If we're expecting anything here, it has to be something like this, right? A smaller version, something like this, right? It can be a big one. So if we get a flat there, and it's going to be a flat because you're already getting a move to the downside. If we get a flat here within a day or two, we're going to look for a buy setup. What if it is actually going to make a new low? Well, at some point, this has to give you a flag. This has to stop, make a flag. And I mean a one hour flag, not a big correction. And that will become a sell setup. So if we get a flag, we're going to assume that we're going to retest the low. So we will go for the sell. And that means we'll assume that they're going to retest this low. Because now that we broke this stop, they either reverse, make a new low, or they continue to go up. The continuation, the buy setup will take longer because we need a flat for the buy setup. The sell setup could happen today, which means if we're going to get a sell setup, we can get four or five hours sideways today, and that's a sell setup. If we're going to get a buy, it's a flat that will probably take a day or two, maybe before we get the buy setup. So I think this one was easier. This was the buy, they had a deep pullback. They actually did make another move up. So now it's more upside. I don't think gold is ever going to go back to retest the low. We didn't expect that when this move happened. I don't think it's going to happen. But what, what could happen here is we might get a bigger correction. We, I, we thought this one would start the bigger correction. It might end up being that that becomes a bigger running flat here. And if we see that possibility, we're going to look for buys. Can this come back deep? It's either going to come back for a deeper correction or probably a bigger running flat here. I think there's a chance of a bigger running flat because we didn't break the low here. See this piece? They actually didn't break the low. That would have completed the flat pattern. And we can go with a contracting flat, but most likely if this starts to come down, we'd assume that we will make a running flat or a deeper correction now. I doubt whether a goal would go retest the low. Structurally, it's, it's possible, but it's not. This move is pretty sharp. So it's not expected. It's a little different from silver. See, this is one sharp move up. Silver is actually a whole correction, a big flat in the middle and then there. So although silver has the probability of retesting the low, gold is unlikely. Gold can just make a deeper correction. I don't think we'll retest. So on the one hour, we get sell setups, so we can go for it. Assuming that they'll come to retest this low, or at least come close to this low for something like that, that would be a running flat upside or make a bigger correction by itself here and then go. So either is a sell setup. So sell setup and goal, and you're actually getting a small sell setup there, which might be a 15 minute flag, not a bad idea for a sell. You can even sell it under the low. Just have to manage the trade. So the sell and the goal is a better idea than any sell on the silver right now, unless silver gets a flag. Euro, the up move when Euro was clear, I think we had a very nice, Flat there for the up move. You had a flat there for the up move. And now we'll decide whether this is totally upside or if we stay in the channel. So I think by now we know this is a channel forming here and this is likely gonna, it could still be a running flat, a bigger running flat here that drops, but most likely it will be a channel that goes up, right? So what we would look for here, if we're gonna look for buy setups is you can take the buy setup, you just have to be very cautious. If they stay in this channel, it is going to come to the top and then drop again, right? So we'll keep an eye on the channel. We'll wait for a buy setup here. I think we'll most likely get a buy setup. Watch it come to the top and then see if they break out of the structure or if they come back down within the channel. Either of those are possible. If you're in a channel like this, it could stay there for a while. It could break out. Or if we think that's a big running flat, I doubt it's a big running flat. I'm most likely looking at a channel option. Both of them structurally looks the same. So let's see if we get a correction here today. If we get a small correction and that's a buy setup, go for the one hour. It looks more like they're gonna be a flat here and most likely like a one hour running flat. So if we get something like this, we go for the next impulse to the upside. Sell setups, that's not going to be today. If, there's a, gonna, if it's going to drop from this point, it, the sell setup will be most likely tomorrow. By then, we'll be when tomorrow's webinar, we'll see whether there's a sell setup there. Right now, it's still a buy. Pong, definitely a buy setup. We have, we barely broke this stop, but I think if you make a flat here, that's one more impulse. If we do have divergence and we might still have divergence, even if we break that top. Right? 
because we are heading towards this stock. So there is a trade there. See all these, these setups here for buys? We're getting a small one here and that could give you an impulse, give you another one, give you an impulse, give you another one all the way to the top there. So this is very likely a buy setup. We can even put in, as soon as you get a pullback here, it's a buy entry. You can even use it if you think it's gonna be a running flat. Buy above the top, keep a stop here. So that if it pulls back like this, they will give you a running flat in here. You'll not be taken out for break even, right? Or you'll not be taken out for a loss. If you get out for break even, re-enter the trade. You know the strategy we use. If, you, if it doesn't go, you get out, you re put an entry again, and you go for the same trade. So I think this is a clearly upside. Ozzy? Ozzy, we kind of break the... Uh, we break out of this one, and it looks very much upside. We're pretty much at this level here, but the move to the upside is sharp. We're at the trend on the uh, downside, which means we're structurally still in the down move. I'll go structurally still downside. We haven't broke out of that structures yet, but it's very likely that we could break out now. One second. So there's a good chance we could break out of this here today. That would be a buy setup. I would not go for any sell until we break out of the lower structure, which means if it's going to be a sell setup, you've got to have a really sharp impulse breaking through this, reversing this last impulse, breaking through here, making a flag here, then only I'll go to sell. Otherwise, to that, that's a good buy setup because if this takes off now, you're totally out of the structure and you're literally going up, right? So this could be a very big move to the upside. New Zealand, this one is easy, same thing upside. Go for the buy setup here. One second, guys. I think the baby is crying there. Let's see. The nanny's not here as yet. Should be here anytime. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's on YouTube, so nothing you can do with that. So let's go. I hope you guys are not hearing me. My traders, are you hearing that noise? Just give me a yes if you're hearing it. Okay, I assume no. So let's go. Yeah, this is a buy setup here. Go for the buy. This will take us out of this structure. And when it comes to this level, somewhere here, we will check for a possible running flat or total upside. I think most likely the running flat is what we're gonna go for because this was sharp. This is going sharp and we have a big consolidation here. So that clears they give us a running flat for downside. Very clearly. So I think we, we have a, a, at least one more up move, maybe two more up moves today, tomorrow, and then we'll look for sell setups. Swiss, we didn't break the top on this one, so we can go with either this is a contracting flat. If it is a contracting flat, we need to break this low. So there's at least one more drop there. And then likely upside, because this becomes a big flat in this move. Right, I showed you the bigger structure. We're gonna stay sideways. If you looked at last week's webinar, I said we're gonna go sideways, take short trades up and down both directions because you're in a sideways move. Right, We're literally in this one and in this one. So this breaks this low here. I think we could get one more sell set up at least, and then we're likely gonna go back up because this becomes a flat. And then all of this big flat here is going to be in this one. And then we're still in this one. So we're not going anywhere very soon. I think we're still in big sideways mover. You can see that. So breaking this here will bring us back up, bring us back down, complete this one, go back up, complete this one, come back down, complete this one, and then go back up. So sideways here, we can be in this sideways move for a very long time. I don't see any big move ready to go unless we completed this. One of the reasons you can look at this and know it's not gonna go because we did that on the yen already, where the yen was in that sideways move for a long, very, very long time, I think a couple of years, it didn't go anywhere. So you just trade both directions as long as you can see that. This very likely is a contracting flat because I don't think this will go break the top to stay in this pattern. There's no need for that. This one was very, you know, this was very corrective. There was a big flat in the middle here. So we'll go with a contracting flat. Expect one more down and then upside. I don't think we're going to get a second contracting flat here, which means not breaking this low. Because if it goes up from here, not breaking that low, that means we have two contracting flats and we're expecting an upside. 
I think most likely we're going to break through that low and then go back up. So if you get one impulse down, take profit off, expect upside. Yen, same thing. This one did break the top. We had this, this flat here. We're going to break this top. We broke the top and you're expecting it to come back down. So we're looking at this as a one, two, three. Come back, retest this low and then go back up. So if you get a sell setup in the end, it's a better one than the Swiss, right? If you get a flag here for a sell, this would be a better trade. Because at least we have to come and break this low. So risk to reward in that trade is gonna be better. They're both going sideways. So sideways mean you're gonna have more ups and more downs both sides as long as you keep breaking the lows. In some cases, they might not break the low, creating contracting flats, right? Like we had in the Swiss, we didn't break the top and then drop, contracting flat, go for it. Yen, I think very likely we did break that top, so we might come and break this low. You get flag, sell it, we know how to manage those. Cad, going sideways and I would go for this sell. I'll go for that sell. I don't think we're gonna make a bigger correction there. I think we're gonna come, at least one more come down. Expect this to drop here. And then there's a good chance you'll go back up because we still have the option of this being a running flat, All right? That's an option because there are two options of that possibility. That flat is either you look at it like this, and this is the top of the structure, which means this totally go down. Make a new low. I mean the new daily low. So the sell here is a good one because it's either going to do this and then go back up, or it's going to continue to drop. So that makes a good sell. We've got a correction. Sorry. You're still in this corrective structure, right? We're still in this structure here. But this drop could drop straight through. So I think we take it. If it stops short and decide to go back up, make a bigger correction here, we can get out for break even. I think it will be easy to get out of that for break even, even if it's making a bigger correction. I don't think there's a bigger correction forming. I think we have enough correction, so this could drop. The cell setup is a good idea. As a matter of fact, if you get it a little higher, you'll probably go with that. So we can go with either here or here. put it here for now. And then if it becomes a bigger flat, which means if they drop here and go back up, we can look, we can move this up higher to get a better, get an advantage in the entry point. But that's a cell setup. Aussie yen. All the yen pairs had up move and they still look like they have up move, but I'll be careful now because we're not sure that, that this is not just a sharp pullback for some running flat in the future, right? Which means this could start to come down like this, go back there and then we drop because the move is starting the downside, right? So what I would do here is we'll check for divergence. We do have divergence. We'll wait to see if this makes a flag or, or a drop which means if, if you get a, an entry order for a buy there is a good idea if they're going to take off. If they're going to drop, let's say this is a one, two, three that is coming down. You will never be tagged. I think I explained this in the last, uh, was either Wednesday or Thursday, there was a question from Lodek, right? When we answered this, that you can actually put that entry order with no fear. So right now you can put a buy entry there. Now I'm not saying that it will be a buy because we're not sure about that right now, right here, right? But that buy is very secure in that you don't have to worry about it being, being tagged if we're falling, right? If this is going to drop here, make a flag, and we are going to get a sell set up here, you will never be tagged. You can only be tagged if they're going to go higher. And if they're going to go higher and this is a flag, they're likely going to go much higher. So the buy entry is a good idea. But if it doesn't get tagged, if it doesn't happen, we will wait for the sell, which is going to be a day or two from now because it needs to drop a little more. It needs to make a flag and only then we get a sell set up. That will be probably the same for all of them, except for this one, because it looks like we're in some kind of a consolidation here that might still come back to the low here before they go. If you get that flat pattern as a buy setup, short term, well, you don't want to sell, it's very short. But we can still be in the buy setup here because this is very clearly making a flat pattern. New Zealand yen, same as the Aussie yen, you can put the entry order here. And if that takes off, we go for it. If it comes deeper, we take it off, right? If this comes deeper here, we take it off because we'll wait for a flag here and then we'll go for the sell. 
This is what technical an anal analysis analysts like to call the head and shoulder patterns. It's pretty much an impulse correction impulse. Impulse correction impulse, a reversal impulse, a correction. That means you're going to get an impulse to the downside. It's very simple explained, you know, it's a simple explanation if you look at wave analysis. So we put a buy entry, but we expect that if this is going to drop, or even if it comes down slowly lower, it doesn't matter. Once it comes lower, we'll take it off. Karen, definitely making a flat here. And it looks like we're in the B part of that flat. Come back here and then go, because this is the sharpest. Right, of the two that you have right now, that's the sharpest. So we're in the B part of that flat. We're going to get a drop here and then here. If you're going to trade in this range, uh, I don't know how much that is, how much pips that is. That's about 99 pips. It's a tradable range. If you get a good buy setup, might not be a bad idea. And especially if it makes a high and start to drop, the sell would be a good idea for the C wave. So we're literally just making correction. That will take a while before it goes, but with trading within this range, I can see this coming back here, coming back there and then going. That would be a simple flat. And assuming that it will be a simple flat, it could be a more complex one. That means give you more trading opportunities. Swiss yen, still a sell setup. The bigger picture is still a sell setup. You can put this like this here now. And the bigger picture is still a sell setup. Right, we're still in a cell. Now, the more this climbs up here, the more we remain in this bigger corrective structure. But this is still a cell for at least back to this level before you go back up. So we can stay in this sideways move here for a while. But the next impulse, the next big impulse is to the downside. Even if you stay in this sideways move, and I can put a line here to put, put the range we're trading in. I'll use the first impulse for the range because we broke both the bottom and the top of it. Come on. Yeah, we both the broke the bottom, broke the top. We can be making a more longer drawn out correction, especially since this is going up. So it can come here, go back there, probably still come back here, go back there and then drop. So this could be more complex, but the next big move should be to the downside. Can we go up a little more? Yeah, sure. I very much think this is starting to look like there's going to be one more up here. Not a buy sell. Don't buy this. Buy the Aussie yen or the New Zealand yen. Don't buy this yet. If it's a yen move to the upside, let this one stay. Let this go. But if you get a sell setup on this, go for it. Any sell setup you get on this, go for it. Euros. Okay, it did drop. And if you if you sold from this one, which is likely with the sell should have been from here, if you're you know if we were trading it and trading it to be from this flag, but even if you put an entry there, I think you can you had enough time to get out of it at this level, right? That consolidation was close the trade, put it to break even, either put the break even or close the trade, put an entry under the low. The close put an entry under the low was the best one. Where are we in the bigger picture? We're still trying to go up because we haven't broken out of the last, we haven't broken out of that uptrend, but we don't have a buy setup, right? There isn't a sell setup either. So there's no setup to trade here as yet. If we're trying to make a new high, if this is trying to go make a new high, sorry, it should be more like this. If you're trying to go make a new high, we'll have to wait for a flag, something like this or something like this. Let's wait for a flag and then buy. We don't have any buy setups. And you're definitely not selling that. This also fell and pulled back. So if you took the trade, same thing, break even. Do we have a buy or sell setup? No. So we wait. Eurocad, pretty much the same thing. We look for the downside. I think this is most likely downside than upside. This entire structure is telling us so. Do we have a sell setup? No. Not as far as I can see. We're, so, we're in some kind of a consolidation, but not a sell setup. So we'll wait to see what this does. Probably make one more up and then we get the sell. Can we buy this if this becomes a flat in the middle there? Sure. At least it will be one short term buy, which means if this here makes a flat in the middle here and you end up getting a buy setup for the upside, you can take the trade. It's just going to be one impulse, take profit off because we're still going down. 
That is just correcting upwards a little more. Any cell setup we get, we'll take it. Euro Swiss, we can go for the cell. It really doesn't matter if it goes higher. It's still a cell setup. We'll probably find a better cell setup than this one. Once this consolidates, it gives us a cell setup. But if, as of now, it's still a cell setup. All right, we don't have any buy setups in there. Euro pound, well, you will get the buy setup eventually. You just need this to come back a little lower here. Give us a flat, and then we can go for that trade. So there's there will be a buy setup. It's not ready as yet. Can you sell in the short range? I think we, we can, but we shouldn't do that. Should not look for any sell setups. Let it drop, make a new low, and then look for the buy setups. Hung in. Also consolidating. So this could be a buy here. And you might want to even consider taking this buy. Because if this here is the running flat, this one will take off. If it is not the running flat, that one, which means if this is a smaller version of an expanding flat there, and we're making a flat here, then this is likely going to come here, come back down, and then go. Right? So the buy is still valid. You worst cases, you can get break even out of it. Pause. That broke, reversed. If you sold, you, I think you should have even taken profit because it dropped quite a lot. I mean, this thing dropped from here to there. That's how much. Yeah, that's 68 pips. So break even is not an option. At least take some profit off or take the profit off and put an entry lower once it starts to consolidate here. Even if you think it's a next flag for downside, right? Can we be going up back one more? Well, it's possible. It's not impossible to make a new high. I don't know whether we'd look at this as a bigger running flat. Yep, that could possibly be a bigger running flat. So if we get buy setups, we can go for it. I would just, you know, keep an open mind of that being the running flat. This has to go up, make a flag, and then we buy. It's already going up. If we get a flag, we buy. Any hourly flag, you buy. Well, not as yet. There are smaller flags, but not the hourly ones. So let this come back here, make a flag here, and then we go for the buy. So anywhere in, anywhere in here, you get a flag, it's a buy setup. What is that one? Okay, one second, guy. I just hit something that I have no idea what that is. Let's just put it back. I don't know there's an ad in the chart that I could have hit accidentally. Sorry about that. Let's go. Punk ad. Punk ad, it's a cell setup, except we're going to make a new high. Structurally, this is a cell. This would probably make a new high and then come back. So short term, there's a buy to break this top. Right? Short term trade, you're getting a flag here. You see there's a flag forming there, and that could be a buy setup to break this top. It's a risky one, but if you want to get aggressive, that could be a possible trade. Break this top and then come down back. Probably break that top there. And then drop again. This eventually breaks to the downside. So it's only a question of how high would it go before that happens. Could it be a slow climb also to the top? We can go with a slow climb to the top because you can make an assumption that this is the running flat. And this one is just going to slowly climb its way all the way to the top here. Make a new high and then come down back. And the bigger structure, we just need to break this top. We need to break this top here, not this one. This one is in the middle. That's the running flat in the middle. We need to break this top. So can this work its way up to the top there slowly? Possible. So take the buy. The buy is a good idea. They're going to work slowly back to the top here. And that is the running flat. If not, we're just going to break the low and then go back up. Okay? So the buy right now is a good idea. Actually, like the idea for that buy. Worst case, you're going to get break even out of it. Pound Swiss. It broke, but it's not going anywhere, right? This is not going anywhere. So it looks like we're going to make a new high here. And then probably downside. We can look for buy setups here too if we get a flag. Pound New Zealand. Also aiming for the upside. Let's go with this. Come on. 
this could still be downside. I don't think this has to be upside. If this goes up one, if this goes up back, we're gonna get one more retesting that up, which means we'd have to relook at the whole structure again, this whole entire structure, that entire structure going up there, we'd have to relook at it. For now, I think we wait with the buy until you get a flag, not even a flag, more of a correction. If this move going up here is pretty slow, so we can drop again, right? If it goes slow like that, it can drop again, but if you're gonna get a buy setup, wait for it to go up some more, make a you know correction more than a flag and then go for the trade. Aussie Swiss. Okay, it might be ready for the downside, pretty much like this. We don't have a sell setup as yet, let's see. Nope, we don't have a sell setup as yet, but it could be heading for the downside. So keep an eye on it, Aussie CAD. Okay, also could be heading for the downside. We can make an assumption that this is the running flat. And this is going down. Or we go one more up and then go down. All right, one more up for the running flat. So let's see if we have a buy or a sell setup. Yep, both possible. Put the buy. Because if this is a correction, we're gonna if this is a correction, we're gonna go up. If this is the top and we are dropping then we'll need a flag somewhere here to sell. We need a really big, you know, eight, nine, 10 hours flag before you can sell it. Aussie, New Zealand, stay away from that. New Zealand, Swiss, go for the buys. Wait for this to finish and then go for the buy or get it from a lower point. So we can either wait for this to finish and then go for the buy or try to get it from a lower point upwards for the breakout. And this is a big running flag. This is a big correction in the making, right? So at some point, this thing is going to go up, right? The reason you want all buy setup starting from the low here, we spoke about that, and you want this buy setup is because this can break out. All right, we don't know which one is going to break out, but this one is going to come here, come back down, come here, come back down, but eventually one of them are going to break out. So the buy setup is a good idea. We take the buy and then we see how far that goes. This is only... This one is on top, it's just floating on the one hour because this is a daily trend line. So it's kind of floating only within the one hour, but that's a buy setup to the top. So that's a good one. You can actually put an entry order there or you can trade it well, differently if you want, but the entry order is not a bad idea. Entry order to the upside. New Zealand CAD, also sideways. I think we love it to go up some more and then go for the sell. I think it's an incomplete pattern. One second, guys, I'll mute myself for a second. Okay, sorry about that break, let's continue. Yep. So we're at the top of this piece, and I think this is an incomplete structure because you have this sharp move up, you have a move down, probably come back up here and then drop. So any cell set up here would be a good idea. We ignore the buys and any sell setup you get from that level would be a good idea, at least back to the lows. So we can put the range. And now that you're on top of the range of an incomplete structure, you're likely gonna go back to the lower part of it. Uh, this is a complex structure. So you, you don't have to figure out the pattern right now. We can just let it play out. But structurally it's incomplete. So which means we'll have to come back at the low here at some point. Cat Swiss, big picture upside. So if you get buy setups in here, if you get a flat here and you get buy setups going to that point, that's a good trade. You can go for that buy. And the Chinese yuan, it's, it's sell setup. That was a sell, it's still giving you a sell. We still need to break this low. So there's at least one more drop there coming. Short term, that's a sell setup you can go for. Yep, you're getting a flag, so it's pretty easy. Go for the sell and then see where, where, where once you break the low, you can take profit. Wait for another correction or another flag before you get into trade. Okay, I'll just draw it because I can't grab the line. So it's this one, one more sell set up there. Let's go. Copper, upside, wait for, wait for another flag, buy again. 
is copper going to try to come back down? Well, not as yet. We're still, it could come back down, but not as yet. So we're still on the upside. So now finally, the UK oil and the US oil has got this move. If you watch last week webinar, we think we're saying that this possibility for a running flat is there. So we're now at the top there. Question is now, if that is a running flat, if we look at this as a possible running flat, which is what we were looking for last week, then the chances are this is gonna come back here, right? If that is gonna come there, this becomes a big flat for upside, or this just continues to fall. And this is a big flat, big running flat in the middle for downside. Both of those would be possible, right? So once we get this move down here, yeah, this either becomes a big correction for one more upside, or this just continues to drop. And this would be a big flat at the top here for the downside. Which is it? We wouldn't know. You can't know that part until it happens. So as of now, I said we wait for cell setups. If we get cell setups, we go for them. We do have divergence here confirming that as well, which is good. So any cell setup you get in here would be a good idea. There might be a flag forming right now. Let's see in the 15. Yeah, you're getting an incomplete one forming right now, which means this piece needs to go back up a little, give you that one. And then that becomes a good cell setup. So we can go for this trade once we get it. There is a smaller contracting flat in there, but I think, I don't I'm not go with the contracting flat as yet. Let's see if we get a running flat. It's more of a running flat because we broke the low. So any sharp spike up like this would be a perfect cell setup for the running flat. If it's a contracting flat, you would have to wait for another flag. And we have the same structure here in the US oil. Right? This is where the arrow was. And this arrow is actually the equivalent of this one. You can see that. That's where the arrow came from. Put it here. This could actually go down. Remember, it doesn't have to be equal. We were just assuming that that's how much it can go. But can we look at this as the running flat, especially if you consider that the dollar. Uh, the UK oil already has it. Can that be the running flat for downside? Absolutely. So if you get sell setups, you go for it. If you get buy setups, it's temporary. You have to be careful. I think the sell setup is most likely what we're going to get. Now, this one, unlike the UK oil, we don't have any running flatter. So it's just coming down. So at some point, you let it make a flag to the upside or a correction here. And then you go for the sell. That confirms the next big impulse to the downside. This one. It's kind of forming something there. So we'll see if you get it. And these two are equal. The US oil, they are not equal. It doesn't matter. It could still be the start of a down move. Natural gas. It's going up. And I still think there might be more upside onto this because until you break this top, yeah, probably go all the way break that top. So there's a little more upside in this. You can still buy. When we break the top, then we'll check for divergence. We will have divergence. We'll have internal divergence as well, and that might be the turning point. US 30, still upside, short-term upside. It's still short-term upside. There's a running flat in the middle, and I think we will get a series of running flats here. See, there's a running flat in the middle here. So this is upside. We could get a series of those running flats because we've got a big kind of a one. I doubt this is a complete B wave to come back here, which means that's kind of a weird three wave structure. It looks like a flat, but it's a little incomplete. Uh, this piece in here was a little mess. You can check it out and see whether we go with the complete one. If not, you can expect one more of this after this up move. But right now it's a buy setup. So go for this, look for the buy setup, go for a trade. You're actually getting a second flag here in the break of this structure, You're getting a second flag. That's a good buy setup, actually. DAX. It's more sideways for now. I wouldn't go with any buy or sell as yet. We're still in this sideways here. So we probably give it some time to form. Any trade you take in any direction, which means if you get a flag for a buy or a sell and both of them could happen, take them as short-term trade. You get in and you get out. Because immediately after that, it can turn, right? So just a big flat in the middle. S&P 500, more upside, more upside. And this one is sideways as well. But this sideways definitely looks like we're going to do this because we're going to be in a big sideways here. More like this. 
for downside. If this is your impulse. So it's more of sideways correction, upwards, but for the bigger drop. No. Nifty, upside. A running flat is very possible, right? Because we've got this big flat here. We spoke of this last week. And then you've got this. So one, two, three. I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back here and then go, giving us a running flat like that. Right, so running flat is pretty much in place. So if you're in the buy, and you probably should be in the buy because that's a good flat. You just have to be careful. Because the running flat is in play there, right? Tesla. A little more up, and then we'll get the downside. We need to break these stops. So I could see one more impulse up. And then we'll be looking for the downside like that. One second, guys. This Monday morning is a busy Monday morning. Give me one. Okay, sorry about that. We had a little pause there again. So this is making a big correction, and I think this would end up being the B part of that correction. We've got three impulses so far. That's the B part. It's upside, but then be careful because it's short-term upside. Once we break that up, we'll stay in this range, and downside is possible. So you take the upside, get out of the trade, look for sell setups. Amazon, we'll have to wait for the sell. So there's no buy setup in this as yet. All right, so we'll just have to wait for it to consolidate more for a sell setup. Or if, if I doubt we're going to go up more, but if you're going to go up more, you'll have to wait for a flag. Wait for a correction or a flag to confirm that, something like this, to confirm it. Because most likely I'm looking at a possible running flat with these two for a drop to the downside. Because we broke that, we broke out of this structure. We made a new high. We've got divergence. I think there should be divergence. And yep, we've got divergence between these two. That's more downside structure. So literally, we're just waiting here to see when we have a sell setup. All right now, it's short term buy setup if you want. Reliance, correction for downside. It's going. To, it's, it's breaking the top already, so buying it here is not a great idea. PayPal, definitely downside. Can this retest the top and then come back here? It's possible, but I don't see that buy setup there. I'm actually looking for a sell setup. So go to the one hour, wait for all of this to finish. And then we look for the sell setup in there. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, this one just keeps going up. So this is in some kind of an uptrend. Every flag you get, you can buy. It does have divergence, so you'll have to be careful now. Every time you make a new high and you see that there's internal divergence as well as divergence, we have divergence here. And we're getting internal divergence here. That means you've got to be careful. And you've really got to be careful of this now. Bitcoin. Okay, we're still going up. Looks a little more up, one more up. Is it channeling? Let's see if we got a channel there. More or less like it. It's still in the consolidation. Here's a bigger picture. We made this drop. And I still think this is all of the B wave structure, even if it goes a little more like that. We'll have to come back here and then go. I just have to make a bigger correction in here. <clears throat> because I don't see this single drop as the end of the correction. Right? That single drop there doesn't mean the end of the correction, especially with all these corrective structures in here. I don't think we, you know, we did break the lows, but it's more as a running flat pattern. So if you get a buy setup here, you'll have to take every buy setup with caution because you're getting a lot of divergence as well, right? So it is a buy setup right now. This actually is a buy setup. And that is within this one. So watch that move there. Breaking the top, take profit. If you're going to go for a trade like this, it's going to be short term within that range, right? Because once you get to this top, you come back to the low. Eventually, this is going to break downwards. Can it go higher? Yeah, the top of it is here. This is the top. So we can even retest that top, not breaking it, but retesting it. Can it break it? Then you're looking at a big running flat in the making. One, two, three. 
XRP still going sideways. So if they stay in this level for a longer period of time, then that becomes upside structure. But the longer they stay in that range, the more it becomes a buy setup. What would be the bigger picture? This could actually go up and make a new high because you can make an assumption that this is all the correction here. Come on. We can make an assumption that this here is all the correction. Right? We can make an assumption that this was the A wave down, this was the B, and this was the C wave that come to that level. Or we can make an assumption we're still in the bigger correction. But this corrected here will go back to the top, and then we'll see whether it comes here or if they continue to go make a new high. Remember, this is the only one that didn't break the weekly high. Or we didn't break this weekly high. Short term, it's upside. Short term in the one hour, this is likely gonna go up one more. At least one more impulse. And then from there, you see what happens. Here is the, oh, Ethereum is lower. This one also short term looks upside. Very short term, just one more up there within that range. And um, this will not necessarily upside. It looks corrective at this point, but I don't think it's necessarily upside. It's just gonna probably do the central. So this would be more of a flat like that for downside. So that is more of one little move up, but then the drop should come. Ethereum, we're in the range and it's kind of ranging in here. So the longer they range in there, the more it's a channel rather than a running flat. If it's a running flat, we'd expect this to totally go up. But if it is a channel, then they'll just come to this top and come back down like that. Big picture, it's sideways. Where this, this is definitely the sharpest move down, this one. And all of this will still be correction, even if you make a new high. And a new high looks possible, not necessarily, but looks possible. So bring it in the four hour. And this is the single drop you have. We did tag it here and we did tag it here, but I think all of that is just making some kind of a, you know, more complex running flat structure. So even if you break this stop, you can even go a little more, but then we're coming back here. So if you're gonna buy into this range, especially if you're a short-term buyer, you have to be careful. If you're trying to buy long-term, you probably don't want to do that. If you're an investment kind of buying, probably don't want to buy here. You want for it to come back and retest these lows before you buy. Because this would definitely not be the impulse to the upside. It's an up move, but short-term. Dash starts to look downside especially with this drop coming here. If we get a flag here, go for the sell. Let's see if we have a one hour flag there. Not as yet, but you can get a running flat, which means if this starts to go back up, we can look for a flat somewhere in here. This one is sharp to downside, so I'll be careful. Wait for flags and then sell. Let this make a flag and then sell it. Not the running flat, but a flag. Okay, great, this one went up, it's coming down, so look for sell setups, this would be easy. Wait for this to make a flag here, and then go for the sell. What are the possibilities we're making a running flat? It's still there, not excluded. Let's go into one hour. Yeah, but unlikely. It's possible, but I think it's unlikely. So if you get a flag here, we go for the sell. Same should be in this. Nope, just going sideways break this stop and then come down. That will give you this flat. Let's go with the GRT. More of a consolidation for downside. Go back there and then downside. So probably wait for the sell setup rather than the buy. LTC most likely a sell setup because we actually broke the stop. So this could be a sell setup coming here. Wait for a flag or sell under the low. 
ADA, short term mostly buy. This short term is mostly a buy setup, especially if this comes back here. Go back there and then we can see this move. So the buy would be very short term. Big picture, it's sideways. Actually, big picture, this is the only one I think that made a new high, sorry. And we're still in the high. We haven't got a sharp drop. So this here could be something. Keep your eyes on that. That could be something there. One more up at least. No divergence. So it could continue to go for some more. Okay, I think that's about it. We've covered everything. Very long webinar. Hope it would be shorter. We'll have to look back at the cryptos. I don't think um, a lot of people trade all those cryptos we looked at. So we can probably look back at them and select the ones we want to make it a little short. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks to the YouTube viewers and I hope you can share it if you like it. I would see all of you. My traders give me some time and then we can come into the trading room maybe in a couple hours or so, hour or two, I'll be back in the trading room with you guys. So today I'll probably jump in more often. The nanny should be here anytime and then I'll be with the trading room with you guys, right? So I'll close the room for the recording to process and then see all of you. Take care.